Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about bad coding. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how would you handle an inflexible and bad coding standard at a new job? I would just bend over and take it, I suspect because the uh, problem with having this whole like oh this is a bad coding practice or this is like a bad way of doing things is that um, there is a very nice saying which I don't know who said it but a very wise person once said that uh, uh, pity the uh, pity the person who is right when the established uh, the established uh, order uh, is wrong or something along those lines. When those in power don't never be right, it's very dangerous to be right when the people in power are wrong. And you probably heard about a few people who have been technically correct about something and suffered because they were correct in a time where the people in power uh, didn't want them to be correct. And so if you have a bad coding standard at, at your work or so forth, I've always um, I always find this to be a fun thing. It usually, start, it usually goes the same way. So let me, let me now unleash upon you a few of my extremely cynical and very horrible experiences around this area that have grown me into the wise and humble uh, software developer I am today and then at the end I'll tell you how I have learned how to deal with this situation and it has been working pretty well. It's not unfortunately one of those situations where you always get what you want but at the very least it it can help. So the first thing that usually happens when you find someone who has like a bad coding standard is that they fall into one of a few categories. And you, you normal things are like, yeah, they just figure out that this is a bad coding standard and they say that, yeah, this is probably, you know, we could probably improve upon this. That's one people person who's like sort of, yeah, we, maybe we should do this in a different way. And then uh, you have those who sort of like question everything and just sort of spray their opinions about better ways of working and we should do this, we should do that. They're very pushy about stuff. And uh, then you have the people who get really critical and just say that this is, you know, they're sort of, well, they basically insult the way things are being done and so forth. They're not so common, but they do exist. They have a lot of arrogance and so forth. And so they stick out their neck. Now, of those three, there's only one person who usually, is, uh, oh, sorry, there's one more, which is the person who sees that there is a bad coding standard and doesn't give a fuck. Of those four, there's only two types who usually make it through unscathed. And that is the person who just asks why we were doing this and that suggests that one time that it, we could probably do it. just makes a suggestion that maybe we could do it in a different way. And the person who doesn't give a fuck. The other two, they start fighting with everything and everybody until one of two things happens. Either they get their way which is very rare, or like usually what happens is that they just tire themselves out. Like they can get like a consensus, but they never actually get anywhere with it. Or they find one coding challenge or one coding standard that isn't so good, and they fix that one thing because now they feel like they have contributed to the code base in some meaningful way, and then they just fall back and do the thing that usually happens, which is that they get a lot of pushback. Manager comes and hints and says, like you know, you know, sit down and shut up do what to do as you're told or they feel like there's not really anyone who's hearing them out they don't feel heard and so they kind of go into the lethargic uh, code monkey state and they don't care that's usually how it works uh, because when people start in a new job they're usually very good at pointing out issues or trying to come they try to prove themselves usually that's number one they always try to prove themselves somehow oh I, I want to show everybody that I'm a good software developer so I come up with like a bunch of things and like point out things etc etc and then six months into it they're barely they barely have enough energy to write their own unit tests anywho so 
that's usually how it goes. And if you ask me, the type of person that you should be here is basically the person who just comes with a suggestion and say, hey, we could do this in a nicer way. And do that just once, because it is the lowest risk thing you can do to you and your code and your career. Because here is the sad truth, guys. Even if somebody's using bad coding standards at a job, you can still make it work. And guys, I have been in companies where the company has had a way of working where it sort of became inevitable that we had to do a lot of bullshit stuff that is ineffective, could have worked a hundred times better, but that was the way they wanted to do work. If you look at our world today, it's sort of the same thing. You can come up with an eco-friendly way of doing things, a vegan way of doing things, a non-smoking way of thing, way of doing things, and there are still the people out there who are gonna just look at you and go, "Yeah, so what? I want to do it this bad, this obviously worse way, and there's nothing you can do to stop me." And that is sort of the way it works, unfortunately. Because, uh, and that's this is one of those uh, times again where there's a nice saying where if you face a problem, you, you first you try to change it, or you try to, you know, accept it, or you move on. Because the reality is that sometimes, my friend, you are going to be in a company where the bad coding standards, well, they're there to stay. And now I urge, urge you to. I mean, some people I know, they have actually just quit their job because they felt like these things were such an issue. But the people who are really good, I found usually, are the people who realize that even if you, I don't know, follow a paradigm that isn't all that great or so forth, if you're really good at what you do, you can make that work. Because, I mean, it's sort of like a race car driver. Like a race car driver, or you say in Formula One, doesn't need a Formula One car to do a really good job on the on the racetrack. Uh, like the, they, they can still sit in like a really shitty car and still beat the average person at uh, at driving, right? And it's some it's the same thing with you, same thing with me, as with all software developers. If you really are a good software developer, well, those bad coding standards, they're probably not the end of the world if you really get down to it. It's more about you. And in some cases, guys, I've been in a situation where like there's like these bad coding standards like, just kept on causing these problems over and over and over. And just as you know, you have bad days uh, with the weather or anything like stuff like that, sometimes you just have to bring an umbrella. You can't make the sun shine all the time. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I handle bad coding standards at a new job is that I make a suggestion of an improvement and then I see, I test the waters. If there's some traction there, I do the thing that I suggest that you do. If there is traction, create a small proof of concept, do some lobbying for the concept, maybe pull up a pull, pull, like a pull request or something like that and just see how people feel about it. If they're willing to sort of try it out, go for it. But don't try to force it. Don't try to be opinionated like be like in people's faces because the reality is, my friends, some people want to eat junk food, some people want to smoke, drink, take drugs, all of this sort of stuff. And if these people are the people who are paying your salary, well, then they're probably not so interested in hearing over and over how horrible they are, etc, etc. And so unless you can make them do what you want, you're just putting yourself in a worse position. And in many cases I found, I've found that it's more productive for you to either move to another company or figure out a way to do what I like to see call write bad code well. Because once upon a time, my friends, there was worse practices that the software community has outgrown. And just because something is more modern or like there are newer and better ways of doing something, that doesn't mean that those old lessons, those old ways of working are so bad that they cannot be made to work. And that is the key. Figure out how to how to deal with those bad coding problem standards in a way so that they actually become at least endurable.
Have a great day.